And welcome back to Nightline. I'm Gwen Hall, your host, and we are paying special tribute. Look at this sign over here. To our heroes tonight, we're saying thank you. Thank you to everybody that's been a part of physicians, doctors, nurses, firefighters, anything that you've done. If you've cleaned the streets, whatever it's been, we're saying thank you to our heroes tonight. And now we're going to go back to some more good singing. And uh, K K Teresa, Kirsten, and Kelly are going to do a song now, I Go to the Rock. Ah, beautiful singing. Listen, we're in the last half hour. If you've got a prayer request, please get on the phone, call it in. Uh, this half hour is going to go by in a hurry. Want to touch on some more reports, praise reports. So many of you are calling in tonight. Thankful, uh, thanking God for those on the program tonight and all they have done and are still doing. A lady said she's really enjoying the singing tonight and enjoying Gwen singing. Uh, here's someone that said, after coming out of the hospital, they can now walk and they're giving God praise for that. Um, here's one that says, uh, nurses and all are our hero and God is still on the throne, praising God, amen. Here's one that says, Margaret thankful for all the frontline people that have been out there during this uh, time of need. Here's one that says, thank God for the doctors, nurses, and all being on the front line. And here's one that says, thanking God for all those nurses and all those on the front line and our military. Amen. So many things to be thankful for. And look at all these requests that are coming in that we're going to be praying over here in just a little bit. Now let's go back to Gwen. Oh, I just give God thanks for all the praise reports. You know I love praise reports, and I'm going to be sharing these in just a little while. 
I want to introduce to you, though, a special friend of mine that's going to be sharing here. I've been knowing her for many years. Janice Anderson, it's so good to have you here. It's good to be here. And she represents uh, the mental health profession. Oh. You know, you went back to school. Mm -hmm. I mean, tell, tell the folks a little bit what you did, because for some of the people, they're seeing you for the first time. Oh, okay. Um, it first started with substance abuse. I yep. wanted to, to become a substance abuse counselor and in school. <laughs> It just kept, everything just kept going and, you know, with a bachelor's degree in psychology and human service, I've been able to work at RHA for the last three years and as a, as a mental health professional and working with folks that are struggling with mental health issues and substance use. You know what? I've been knowing you a long time and I, every time I'd call Ronnie and say, she's in the books. She's <laughs> studying in the books and just, it was just like one thing, you were hungry for it. Yes, because I love you it. knew where God had brought you from. Absolutely. You know, and she wanted to be a help. She wanted to give back. So that's exactly what you do. And I'm so proud of you. Well, thank you. <laughs> I'm so thank proud you. of you. Now, I want to talk to you about what, how your job, how was it impacted during this pandemic? Well, when we got the news that the world was shutting down, mm -hmm. um, we work, we call us the lower, the lower level dwellers or whatever because we work on the bottom floor of a, of a two-story building. Yeah. And uh, everything upstairs shut down because all of that was um, folks meeting to go to groups and stuff like that. So all of that was shut down. All the, the um, counselors and stuff that worked with folks one-on-one, -on -one, everything went to um, computer, everything went, we, find, we learned the Zoom meetings, you know, folks were having to do that to be able to talk with their doctors and stuff. Well, I didn't think about none of that. But downstairs, um, there was the peer living room, it was where I was at when the pandemic started, um, and it's ran by peer support specialists that are in recovery from drugs and alcohol and or mental health issues. And we, we work a lot with the homeless population and other folks that are coming through, you know, trying to work on recovery and all that stuff. Then we also, in the lower level, have the Behavioral Health Crisis Center and all the folks that are struggling with mental health and substance use, when they go to the hospital, they send them over there. Did you see a lot of overdoses during that time? Not to start with, yeah. but it was just, I mean, everything just started changing, you know, and then we've got Neil Dobbins, which is where I'm working now, mm -hmm. and it was, it was our um, crisis stabilization seven day inpatient de detox unit. And it was a 16 bed unit. They cut the beds automatically in half. I mean, so that everybody was in a room by themselves instead of two to a room. Um, we, our hours changed, but we never shut down. I mean, it was, it was a little nerve wracking. I'm like, Kelly, it was, it was, we didn't know what to expect to begin with. I mean, we were cleaning every other hour. You know, we were, everybody was worried about getting close to anybody and stuff, but. We um, really did. I don't know how much thought was given to what y'all were doing there, but it was just as important as hospitals. Absolutely. You know? I think so. I mean, I think, think about so. it for a minute. Well, and then we had the folks that weren't able, and it's so funny because right before the pandemic hit, state funding got cut for mental health, and so they were changing some things up anyway. Some, some, wow. some groups were getting cut and stuff like that. So we knew when we found that out that we were going to get an influx of folks that are struggling with mental health issues and, you know, substance use or overdose or whatever. How many there on staff, you would think? Um, I would say before the pandemic, that was well over 100. In the lower level, there's probably, I don't know, 35, 40 of us. So quite a few of working, you. Working, yeah. Yeah. So how did it affect everybody as a whole, do you think? As far as the staff goes, yes. Well, I mean, it was it was nerve wracking, you know. Just uh, we Any we set up a precautions. You oh had to yes, we set up a COVID <laughs> table. Everybody that came through the door had to have their temperature checked, and we went through the questions, the COVID questions. You know, if they've had any symptoms or whatever before yeah. they could even enter the building. And could so, they have visitors? Mm -mm. Oh, see, all that quit. Yeah, yeah. So. I mean, it was hard and we, you know, started, then it seemed like as time went on 
and folks weren't being able to meet in person, this human connection is important. I it is know. so important. So important. And some of these folks, I mean, they live to go to those groups because that's where the that's where they get their help. That's where they find coping skills and they learn how to do stuff. And a lot of folks weren't tech savvy, so they were unable to, to maybe get on the Zoom meetings, not understanding what that was about. Some of our folks couldn't afford internet, you know, so they're not having that opportunity to even get online to talk to their doctors, so a lot of it was over the phone. Um, it's been it's been interesting. And you know, a lot of people worked from home, but with your job, yes, it was hands on. It was hands on. Yes. Thank God, because yes. who did they have to really connect to? Right. The family couldn't come. Mm -mm. Yeah, I'm sure your doctors and nurses and things like that was there, right? The yes. Uh, the, well, now our, most of our providers, we do have a couple of our providers that come in in person, mm -hmm. but a lot of them have started doing the Zoom. Oh, you know, okay. Like, well, and then a lot of them work at all the hospitals. Yeah. You know, mental health and stuff. So. Why? Why? All of this has happened in all these months. What has it done to the facility? Has it made y'all stronger? I think so. Yeah. I think we pulled together as an incredible team. You know, all, I feel like all three of the departments that are in our lower, le lower level at mm -hmm. RHA is, um, and we've worked together for the last year and a half, helping one another out because of all the changes that were being made and stuff. And um, I, it has brought us closer. I, I feel never like. asked you this, but is there a time where there's like a service where people can go to church or pray or anything like that? Uh, at at RHA? Yeah. Well, um, no, not necessarily. But if they ask for someone, could someone come and during that time and have visited and prayed with them or anything? Well, now at the in the unit mm -hmm. uh, that I'm working at now, and I'm very grateful for the opportunity that I've been given Thank to have Lord. that um, one hour group that I get to do about reframing through a spiritual lens and being able to talk about recovery from a faith-based perspective and, and in that opportunity talk about God and talk about how powerful scripture is and how faith can help us in our recovery. That's been, that's been a, I've truly enjoyed wow. it. Wow, um, you know yeah. what? That's been a God thing. Yes, it has. That really probably helped a lot of them. Was there a particular scripture come to you during that time? That well, I feel like, and I know this is one of my favorites, okay? And I, and I wrote it down because I didn't want to miss, I didn't want to <laughs> misquote it. Um, but it is Isaiah 6, 8, and it says, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, Here I am. Send me. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and it means something to my heart, you sure know, because because that was the uncertainty going through the coming into work and not knowing what we were going to face. Uh, some days it's challenging to say the least, but you know, just Lord, go before me, make a way, um, open a door. You know, if I get to talk about you, if I just get to share your love with somebody that's hurting, let me be that person. You know what? And you gotta. You gotta look at that camera and you gotta read that again because I heard the Lord say, and that scripture's for somebody that's watching right now. Yes. So you need to look right in this camera and Absolutely. you need to share that scripture one more time. Okay. Well, it's Isaiah 6, 8, and it says, "Who, whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, here am I, send me. Because there are people out there right now that need to hear that. Yeah. And then there are those that are right now watching this program that they've prayed that prayer just like you did i'm ready lord yeah i'm i'm available use me yeah and they've just waited for the door to open because those doors open for them just like it did for you yes they will no matter what your background is no matter no i mean i would have never dreamed in a million years that i'd be doing what i'm doing so today proud of you but like you said it's not a job it is a calling it's definitely a calling it it's is like, that's what I told Wilson a while ago. I said, it's a calling you have. It's all of these, you know, Kelly, it's a calling. Yeah. Every one of these, it's a calling. And what a great opportunity. And, you know, you poured yourself in the books, the studied. The Bible said, study to show yourself approved. You did that. I did. But you weren't just equipped in learning about what they did there. But you're equipped in 
taking the word, mm -hmm. making it real, making it come alive to somebody. Yes. You just did that tonight through TV. Yes. See, God wants to use us right where we're at. That's it. And tonight, if you're watching, and I really feel like there's somebody watching tonight and you, you feel like there is no hope, I'm going to tell you something. God is the way, the truth, and the life. There's only one way. It's by the Father. He said, call upon me. That's what the Word said. I've done it many times, yes. so have you. Yes. Call upon me, and I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things. Through this past year, yes, we are. We're recognizing our heroes. There's been many of you tonight that are watching. Thank you so much for what you've done, for what you've given, for what you've shared, for the time you've taken, for the time you've sacrificed. Yeah. The times when we didn't know if it was safe or not, we went in the name of Jesus. Yes, we did. And tonight, you're in that place. You know, the number's there on your screen. You need to pick up the phone right now. I know. I, I see a woman, and she's just like this, just wringing her hands. You know what, honey? God didn't leave you or forsake you. He had this program just for you tonight. I'm going to ask you right now to pick up the phone. Yes, dial that number. Somebody, I promise you, will be on the other end of that line that will pray with you. <laughs> They'll take the time to pray with you. Yes, they will, in Jesus' name. And Janice and I pray for you right now. Yes. And we just ask the Lord to minister to you. I know you feel all alone, but you know what? He's right there. Yes. He said this program was just for you tonight. If not for anybody else, it was just for you. That He is your hope and that He is your help. And you feel like I'm holding on to this rope. You keep holding on. Don't you turn loose. If anything, tie a knot and just hang on because He's going to see you through. I see that this night. He's going to see you through this darkness you've been going through. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. We're going back to Scott right now. He's going to sing a song so appropriate. It is well. i yes. 
when my faith shall be sad, the clouds be rolled back as a scroll. my soul I tell you that's one of the greatest songs to me because you know it is well if we know him so many requests have come in tonight as you can see in my hand as I flip through these so many needs but I'm so thankful we serve a God that is more than able to provide in every situation that we have here I've, as I look through Gwen there's there's uh, those that, for example, there have been many I've seen on drugs oh, wow. going through bouts with uh, that. Someone's fractured their knee out of work. Here's one they need healing in the family and all. And you know, Jess, I guess during times like this, it's really put strain on families. Yeah. You probably yeah. have seen that Absolutely. in so many ways yes. and all. Here's one that uh, lady's got breast cancer, fighting that. Unspoken request, but God knows those. Here's another one that a lady's uh, uh, has children, house has been sold out from under them, needing a uh, uh, place to live. Granddaughter getting married, but needs prayer. So many needs here. Eyesight needs repaired, having trouble seeing needs right leg God to touch them there having trouble here's someone that's uh, been losing blood through their stomach and, and that's something I'm facing right now that I'm getting ready to have repaired this coming week and I just lift you up right now yes, and Jesus I agree God. with you for healing yes. in that area in Jesus name yes. in Jesus name we had so many requests. Boy, we have a good friend that went home to be with the Lord early this morning, Edith Freeman, really yes. good friend. And so we want to remember Jonathan and the family. We just lift them up as well. Amen. Janice, we thank you for coming and sharing. Thank I wait on you to give her some of those requests. And as we're getting ready to pray, I have I have a couple of praise reports. 91-year-old lady said she's watching the program tonight and she's enjoying it. And so she wanted everybody to know that she enjoyed their testimony. And uh, here's a praise report. A minister, Mary Johnson, said she just wanted everybody here at Nightline to know that she has not had a seizure like in 38 years. So we give God praise, praise God. for that tonight. Amen. A grandson and wife couldn't have children, but now she's expecting a baby. I love good praise yeah. reports. It goes on and on and on. And but we want you to know tonight that your prayer requests are important. And I'm gonna ask Wade if he would. This has been such a special pra uh, program tonight to our heroes. But your prayer requests are so precious to us, and we take it very serious. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna ask Wade if he would to to pray over these requests. Yes. Father, as each of us hold these requests yes. in our hands right yes. now, yes. Father, we just lift them up before you. Yes. I'm thankful, Father, that we can go beyond the veil, that we can come before the throne 
of love, mercy, and grace, Father. And hold these petitions, Father, knowing that you know each and every situation. Father, you're the peace speaker to those that need peace. You're Jehovah Rapha to each and every one that needs a healing touch, Father, from you, no matter what it is. It could be a diabetic situation, cancer, whatever. We just curse it in Jesus' name to go from that body. In Jesus' name we pray. Those that are having family problems, Lord, ask you to mend those families, yes, Lord, Lord, back Lord. together. Thank you, Jesus. And Lord, we just look for all these requests mm. to return as praise yes. reports. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name In we Jesus pray. Name. Amen, amen. Amen, amen. We just receive that. We just receive that tonight. From our Nightline family to you, and your family. We're so glad that you watched the program tonight and we're gonna close out Otis and myself and we did a song a while back and I want you just to enjoy and sing along with them and, and myself as we do Amazing Grace. The Lord bless you. God. 